Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers to put front disc and pads on this 2016 Range Rover Sport. To put the vehicle into safe jacket mode, we switch the hazard lights on, make sure all the doors and windows are shut, then on the key fob, press the approach light and unlock button at the same time. And the suspension will go up to its high most position, once like that. Okay, now we're safe to jack. First thing we're going to do is release the, um, the lid off the brake fluid reservoir. So to do that, there's four little clips. You just unscrew them and then pull them out of the holes to re remove that plastic panel. And then we can see the reservoir. So just unscrew the lid. If there's too much fluid in it, because we've got to push the pistons back in and fluid will come back into the reservoir, if there's too much fluid, just drain a little bit off so it doesn't uh, overflow and go all over in the, inside the car. That's a lid release, so now we'll get to get sending the car up in the air. First thing I'm going to do is just disconnect the pad wear sensor wire. So we'll just have to take the inner wheel arch cover off. There's a series of these little clips, so you, you pull the centre out and then you can, that releases the little pressure the thing at the back and you can pull the, the plastic tag out. There's a couple of cell tapper screws underneath and a couple in the top. So once they're all out, we can remove that out of the way and then we can see the plug where the wear sensor is. So we can unplug that, unclip it all from its clips before we take the caliper off. What we need to do now is punch out these two pad retaining pins. Now, because it's an aluminium caliper, they're steel pins. They've probably never been out before, to be honest. So you do, you have to hit them in the edge with the punch as hard as you can, and then you push the pin through because of what, on the other end it's got, it's got a little spring clip, and that's what holds it in place. But these do get really, really tight. Here's one we took out the other side. As it was hitting it out this side, you can see it actually bent the pin. It's really difficult. So what you need to do is hit it that side and then probably put a punch on the other side and tap it back and then keep working it backwards and forwards until you can get the pin out. But they do get very, very tight. The top pin came out okay. So I removed the spring retaining clip and then it's a case of tapping the other one out. You can see as you're tapping it out the corrosion that comes out as you're tapping the pin out. So before we put the new pins back in, we definitely want to clean out all these holes and copper grease them. So the next time it might be you changing these pads again. So you definitely want to make sure that everything's clean before we put it back together. Now we're going to take out the pad or the caliper bracing bar. So it's a 13mm socket on the other side. Take out the, the bolt at the other side. And then we have to knock this pin out this way towards us. Same again, it's in steel, it's in um, a steel pin in aluminium caliper, so it will be really, really tight. I would definitely order a fittings kit when you buy these pads because we'll need to bash the pin out that way. Um, so you, you'll just need to put a new pin in just in case you damage the threads. You can see as the pin's coming out, you can see the corrosion on the end and it's got to go all the way through. So what I would generally do is just spray a bit of lube on the pin and then knock it back in and then knock it back out again. So keep working it backwards and forwards to give you the best chance of getting it out without breaking anything. You see I've got the pin halfway out. But you just got to remember this aluminium caliper is fairly fragile so in, I would always just get a bit of emery cloth before you take the next because it's chamfered in the middle and then you've got another the same size pin at the end. So I'll just clean it with emery cloth and just keep lubricating it. Get, to, get some grips on it and just keep lubricating and then just Pull it through nice and steady. There we go, like that. Just going to try and push the pistons back. So I've just got this pad uh, flaring tool. So I'm just going to try and get it in, just in between the pads best we can. And just do it top, bottom, top, bottom so you can get it nice, nice and even. And hopefully, once that out, we should be able to remove this pad. And then we'll do the same to the inside pad. Whilst the outside pads come out relatively easy, the inside one is just seized, it's just the, so the pad is seized onto the caliper. So I think the best way for me to do this without doing any damage to anything, we're going to unbolt the caliper, just put it to one side, we'll probably need a, something just to rest it on because the flexible hose isn't too long. Then I'm going to unbolt the brake disc, remove the brake disc, then I'm going to bolt the caliper back onto its mount with the disc missing, so then we can get that pad, we can get a bit of leverage in it uh, with the disc out of the way. I've taken the two 21mm spanner size belt bolts out the back of the caliper so we can remove the caliper now and we can just place it carefully to one side and then we're going to remove the disc so you'll need a 
the T50 Torx bit into the pad retaining bolt, give it a good tap with the hammer just to make sure it's all the way in and then just remove it carefully. Once that out, we'll just need to tap the back of the disc. And once the disc is removed, I can then replace the caliper with the disc missing and that gives us a much better option to get in to get the pad out and I'll show you that in a second. As you can see I've bolted the caliper back onto its mounts, tightened them up fully but with the disc missing so then we can get behind with the bar and tap the pad this way so it comes off its uh, slider of mounts and then, um, then we can remove that pad easily without damaging the caliper. You can see the corrosion here on the caliper there so the pad's been absolutely stuck and you can see it on there, I mean so it's absolutely stuck solid in there so what we need to do now is get a file and really clean out all the corrosion on all four pad fa uh, fitting faces I've cleaned up all four services where the brake pads fit and I've also cleaned up the, um, the old brake pads and I've fit them back in with our piston pusher backer at all so that we can wind the back and we can push all the pistons back because it's got six pistons in this the old tool won't fit in between all six so this is the best way to push them all back so they're all back okay so now we can remove that take the caliper back off fit the disc I'll show you that in a second before we fit the brake disc I'm going to just clean up all the mating surfaces so, so all the surfaces where the disc hits the, 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 uh, the hub want to be nice and clean so it sits super super flat so you don't get any worries about brake judder so once it's all nice and clean, just put a little bit of film of copper grease on it and then I'll fit the disc. The disc in place, put a copper of grease on the retaining bolt, then tighten it up to 35 newton meters and then we can replace the caliper. As you can see these discs are coated, the nice thing about these is they're not covered in the, the normal oil that you see on normal um, disc and also the boss doesn't rust so through your wheels after a while that bit doesn't rust so it still looks nice and clean. So just give me a quick spray with brake cleaner just to make sure there's no oil or residue on the disc. Do the same on the back side and then that's it. Copper grease the edge of the brake pads so hopefully we won't have the seizing up problem like we did this time. So that's both the brake pads in. So I'm going to put the lower pin in first but make sure you say clean out all the holes where the pins go even the bracing pin. Clean them all out really really properly with a file so they're all nice and clean and copper grease before you put them back in. I always to make sure we've got plenty of uh, copper grease in I just put a bit on the end of each pin, just make sure you work it through all the mounting holes that, so it's all nice as free as possible and the full, fully fill the nice copper grease so they won't seize up next time. Do it with the centre pin as well. So that's all our pins back in now, look all the way through to so make sure when you're hammering them in the back you feel that they've gone to the end so the spring clips are really as far in as they can. Tighten up the bolts in the end of the brace in the middle of the caliper, uh, like 35 newton meters. The caliper bolts are the uh, caliper to carrier bolts are 282 newton meters. It's now time to fit the pad wear sensor. So just push it into the, the pad when it came out, and then just follow it up the way it came from. So the first bit goes around the bleed nipple, and the next little clip is behind the suspension strut arm. And then just follow it back, re replace it in the clips that we, where you took them out of the uh, when we took it to pieces. So that's the pad wear sensor all clipped back into place. I'm now going to replace the wheel arch liner cover, and then we'll put the wheel back on, tighten it down to 140 newton meters, and then that's pretty much this side done. So that's our front disc and pads fitted. All we need to do now is jump in the car, pump the pedal up to push the pistons out onto the pads, check your brake fluid level, and replace the cap and the cover and then let it off the jacks and then we'll reset the suspension so all the doors are shut, hazard lights are on and press the entry uh, light and the boot unlock light buttons on your remote control that'll reset your suspension alternatively if you drive over 50 miles an hour it'll automatically reset